Hello there, lovely soul. This is Infinity and welcome to your June 10th new moon energy update and meditation. Channeled, guided, astral, self-healing meditation. I know it's a mouthful, but it is what it is. They are channeled, astral, guided, self-healing meditations. I do not come up with any of my meditations. I'm just told when to do them and to put myself um, in a position to receive and record and put them out. And whatever happens in them is 100% guided and channeled with channeling sometimes in the meditations. So let's get into it. I hope you're doing great on this new moon. We also had an annular uh, solar eclipse this morning. It was a ring of fire solar eclipse that I kind of spaced on, to be quite honest. I'm really feeling the new moon. Um, and I really... I do feel the the energies of any eclipse, but I'm really tapped in already with the eclipse in December, the total eclipse in December on the 4th. So um, it was actually one of my clients that, uh, that rang my bell as far as the ring of fire annular lunar or sorry, solar eclipse this morning. Um, and that's just, it's a partial eclipse. It's a partial solar eclipse basically. So anyhow, I hope you're doing great. I hope you have been doing great. It's already the 10th of June. This month is flying by uh, and I knew that it would. Uh, I've been busy. I've been taking more. I've been really busy, but also taking more personal time and um, dealing with a few events in my life that took time, energy and focus. And I needed to, to deal with those things and honor those things. Um, one of which was a really bad energy welt outbreak um right at uh i was like three days past the uh the solar sorry the lunar eclipse and full moon uh last week i really didn't uh clear enough energy in my body to account for all the incoming activations and light codes and upgrades and in integrations that were coming in with this lunar eclipse. Um, so I definitely paid for it. I am going to be, I, I took video when it happened, but I, I didn't, I actually uploaded it and just never posted it. It just was <laughs> one of those things, but I do want to show people because, and I have talked about this before, I do have another video on it and a podcast on it um, because it's definitely a thing where we will break out in, in very different and very in varying types of what it, what I've been told from our guides is energy welts, which basically means your skin um, is exhibiting um, like inflammation. It gets very puffy and big and red. Uh, it looks like a bug bite of some sort but they're not um at all uh and they're they're usually on your chakras or meridian points and they're also usually mirrored so if you have it on the left side of your body you'll have it on the right side of your body as well so you kind of give them pairs or they'll be like like the this last time that i got them um they were on my back right at the top and the bottom of my left wing and right at my throat chakra but at my in my at my neck not at my throat and then they were on my both of my arms and especially my right arm my right hand so it was pr and they were humongous and they made me swell and they itch and they're very, very painful. Uh, because and it's just literally energy, like just too much energy and not having cleared enough energy before the incoming energy. And so the body is just saying, yo, 
look it, you're not taking care of yourself the way that you should for the times that you're in and all that good stuff. And, you know, we're all human. We all go, oh, tomorrow, oh, I'll do this. So I did regular showers and I did like short little baths, but really for me personally to clear as best as I possibly can, it is to take at least one or more at least hour long or more long shower slash baths and meditation and clearing and cycling through energy and working with my chakras and connecting to my guides like in a really deep level but in the bath in the water uh that is extremely the the most potent place to to heal for yourself would be in any water um and uh hotter the water the better because hot water helps you transmute energy it pulls it literally extracts the negative energy from your body and you add uh herbs and oils and salts and crystals and all sorts of good stuff I call it my soup because I got so much going on in bath with me (laughs) and I absolutely love it I can be in there for hours uh, and I got a new, a new toy, a new fun thing that is, it is like so spectacular in my life. I'm so happy that this came into my life. I had been thinking and wishing like, how do I get more physical exercise in with the space that I have with the limited, you know, resources and where, you know, around where I live or, you know, getting to certain places, et cetera, et cetera. And then in popped the yoga trapeze by yogabody.com not a sponsor (laughs) i wish um but nevertheless i'm telling all my clients and my listeners and my watchers uh and my followers and subscribers all about the yoga trapeze because it is so fantastic so easy and not expensive it's uh, I think currently $120, which is super affordable for what you get. And it's just this really awesome, high quality. It's this, it hangs from the ceiling or a door or whatever you can hang stuff from. I have it. I have these, um, bolt things, uh, connected into at my ceiling and it straps through there or the straps go through there and then it hangs and you sit in it and then you do all these awesome moves um inverts and it really you get completely inverted and in different positions and it's not difficult to go upside down in this thing i mean it's just awesome it clears energy instantly which i didn't really expect i know that i used to love doing handstands uh it's good for all sorts of reasons, but excuse me, I didn't realize that getting this thing was going to be so beneficial energetically. I thought it was really going to be like just overall help me with my fitness, but also um, the one of the main selling points of this thing is to help you with your back. Um, so any kind of back pain, but especially lower back pain and so many empaths light workers have lower back pain. That's that, um, root and sacral chakra that like soft spot there. Plus I had a really bad injury about, uh, 15 years ago. Um, so I, so my (laughs) lower back is extra soft and susceptible and vulnerable to getting achy but just energetically all of that stuff so you use this thing and you go inverted for just a few minutes it really shakes up your energy it makes it really makes forces the body to kind of realign the the energy centers which is awesome you know your head is down your feet are up and it just really shakes stuff up in a really great way you can swing I love swinging in it my cat likes to baby likes to come whenever I get in it she'll run over there and get right underneath me and start playing with me and my hair is like I'm swinging it's so much fun I will be posting it on my Instagram and possibly on YouTube as well I just like I said, there's been other things going on that I've had to put my focus into and just um, aside from clients and being very busy in in that regard as well. So anyway, so 
if this is ringing your bell, definitely check out yogabody.com. This, you get two choices, two different color choices for your yoga trapeze. It ships really quickly. It folds up super tiny and I just, I know you'll love it. They also have this really great deal where if you pay $1 plus shipping, um, and they'll send it to you. You could try it for 30 days. And if you don't like it, you'll send it back. I didn't do that option because I knew I was going to love it. So I just paid for it and I got free shipping. Um, so those are your options. So anyway, uh, if you do get it, come back, circle back and let me know how much you love it. Okay. And then the other thing, um, without getting too much into it, because I'll get upset and emotional, is that um, my dog Rosie hasn't been doing so great these last few months. I've been healing her a shit ton all the time, doing my best to, you know, just monitor her quality of life and her happiness levels and everything. But she went blind and deaf and even her her sense of smell really tanked and she also had um, a cough and uh, you know she was just you know old not not incredibly old but like 15 almost 16 and um, she was with me for all of two but two of those years and uh last friday was the day that i had to let her go so it, it it was tough leading up to it these last few months have been especially challenging um and then you know definitely definitely tough to to know that that was getting inching ever so much closer in my world um so yeah it's just been weird and different and strange not having her around uh here i go okay so it's just i want to say i love you rosie <laughs> you're awesome see i knew it was gonna happen i'm cool i'm cool it's good <laughs> shifting and changing turning the page here turning the page here uh we are i I'm super excited for this. We're going to get into, we're going to really get into it now. Um, I'm super excited. Just a couple hours ago, as I was preparing to do this, the UPS truck rolled up and dropped off my latest and brand newest Oracle deck. You guys, I'm so excited about this Oracle deck. Uh, I've been big time feeling the Fae and big time feeling the Sea Fae, mermaids in particular. And I just got the Oracle of the Mermaids by Lucy Cavendish. It's absolutely beautiful. The artwork is beautiful. I can feel the energy from it. I already went through every card and consecrated them and put them in smoke and connected with them. I did not go through and look at all of the cards because I wasn't guided to, and it's not necessary to do that. Plus I really like surprises because I'm really hard to surprise. <laughs> so I'll take surprises any way I can, if I can control it. So I I'm one of those. Don't tell me, I don't want to know because I'll pick up on it anyway, most likely. So when it comes to this kind of stuff, it's like, I just kind of like quickly went through, looked at some pictures, looked at some of the titles, flipped through the book and went, oh my God, I'm so excited for this deck, you guys. So we're going to get into this. Um, let me pick up the book. There's so much here that I want to read. And most likely what I'm going to do is come back in another video and read through this book and do a very you know specific just mermaid mermaid themed uh video oracle read and meditation probably this is our new moon oracle and meditation uh and the mermaids are definitely very connected with the moon um the moon is feminine mermaids are very feminine uh and there are there's just a lot of really fun stuff in here but i just don't want to spend too much time you know in this in this video slash podcast um about it because it, w it would just be really really long so but i am going to read a little bit of 
of this just to set the stage here to give a little bit of information first we're going to go to directly to um well, it says mermaid and moon cycles. One magical practice the mermaids will almost certainly encourage you with is connecting to the cycles of the moon. Here is a simple guide to moon phases, their timing, and their powers. So full moon, high tide of power, amplifying and creative, waning moon, withdrawing, a sucking and pulling impact, dark moon, a time to go within and soul scry revelations from within at this time new moon a new cycle begins time to begin your activation of intentions and waxing moon new growth continued action and results will come about mermaids and the moon have a strong relationship did you know that there are two daily tides which are directly affected by the moon's field of gravity we notice the water's response to the moon and sun's gravity but the earth the mountains and the glaciers too feel her mag magnetism so important where were these cycles to our ancestors that our language was built around natural cycles for example there are no words for time in old galaic there are only words for wind sea weather cycles and moon changes and the word tide is scots gaelic in origin in most places, there is a delay between the phases of the moon and the effect on the tide. Spring tides fall two days after the moon phase. This is fascinating to me. Does this mean that in real terms, we here on Earth receive the full impact of a full moon some two days after seeing its light radiate to Earth? The biological cycles of all sea creatures and inter- tidal creatures those who live in the liminal shores and we human too we humans too occur in multiples of tide times gestation and hatching is timed to the lunar cycle and to tidal rhythms perfectly in human wi women our menstrual cycle matches the cycles of the lunar tide cycle <laughs> yes it does oh look at that it's 222 pacific right now imagine that and uh yeah i have gone from new moon periods full moon periods and in some months like last month and in may i had a period for the new moon and for the full moon and that is and just this whole year it was like on the I, I skipped a couple of weeks to get in alignment with the um, equinox and then with the next new moon and then it's just been very interesting the more the more clear you are energetically the more connected you are to the earth and to the moon the more you'll be on those cycles very precisely and your body will adjust stop or it'll slow down the cycle or speed up the cycle to put you in alignment with these certain astrological and celestial celestial events so you may as a female have witnessed that for yourself um, but just to let you know, yes, it is a thing. Okay, so there we are about the about the moon. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, how to connect with the mermaids. You can easily begin to connect and bond with the mermaids, no matter where you live on this beautiful blue and green planet. I find it works so well to make an offering to them so they can learn to trust me and see the that I mean what I say, that my action and intent are intertwined. An offering can be of your time, your energy, and it can be made in many forms. I so encourage you to consider doing this. An offering shows you are serious about creating a link between you and the being or the element you are offering, offering your energy to. And this dedication will have its reward in further blessings and in intimacy and in understanding. Gathering litter and human debris along the shore or anywhere near a body of water is a wonderful offering to the Murph peoples. You may wish to take a bag with you specifically to collect litter and dispose of it through recycling and thoughtful and the 
most thoughtful, best ways. It is no chore, but a joy to do this. It lightens us. It makes us feel happy to be a part of the clearing, the solution. Do not be afraid of the sea, of the great lakes, of the deep, fast flowing rivers, but do respect them and know and learn of their ways. Ask the water and her mer beings for, <clears throat> excuse me, for information. Ask the water and her mer being mer beings for information. Watch, listen, give them your time. In return, they will grant you wishes, dreams, and delight, as well as powerful clearings, visions, and connections with all the water creatures, from the smallest fish to the playful dolphins to the mighty whales. If you are nowhere near a body of water, you may wish to consider making an offering to, to an organization that works directly with clearing the seas of human hunters like sea shepherds or local conservation groups. May all your interactions with the sea, with the waters, with the wells and the shining lakes and their merfolk be blessed. Hear, hear. So be it. Oh my goodness. That got me emotional. I think I'm still, I think I'm just in a constant state of emotion, being emotional right now, to be honest. I get there really quick, but I will say that I have definitely been, um, been feeling the, the ocean, the sea, the water. We have a lake here about a mile away and I'm going to be getting in it very soon. It's actually super clear and clean. I'm super excited about it. But yes, absolutely. If you can get yourself in a body of water, absolutely do it or just near it if it's too cold or it's you can't actually go in it. And at the very least, take yourself to your bathtub or if you don't have a bathtub, take a shower and just think about being in those places and ask your guides and guardians to set it up so you can be in those places sooner than later. Okay, so I'm going to continue reading here. Signs the mermaids are with you. You may hear the sound of water, a little like a seashell is being held to your ear, even though no shells are near you. You may feel a growing concern for and connection to the creatures of the oceans and the waterways of the world and feel like you most absolutely get into like you must absolutely get into water even if it is to have a long lingering bath each day you may find yourself wearing colors of blues and greens of coral and pearl and find yourself singing snatches of sn songs without words in them from time to time you could feel great love for others have an urge to grow your hair very long and have a growing interest in sensuality dance and sacred sex swimming and forms of exercise that take place in the water may call you, as will places on the planet where the mermaids love to dwell. They can often come to you in dreams and your emotions may surge up under the influence of the mermaids. Dreams of Atlantis, Lemuria, shape-shifting into sea creatures, or great journeys across or underwater or to sacred islands of the Celtic lands may also serve when the mermaids are seeking to reach you, to heal emotions and encourage you to enjoy your experience as a human being this lifetime. Yay! Okay. So I'm going to read this last part and then we will get into it. When to work with this deck. These are wonderful, wonderful cards to work with you, with you wish to, what, what? These are wonderful, wonderful cards to work with you wish to find, that doesn't make any sense. So that's a typo. What it should say when you wish to find out more about your love life. Emotion, emotionally, they connect easily and deeply and can see right through the situation with eyes that shine with compassion and hold up their magical mirror so you can finally see the truth. They can assist you in your own love life questions and are very, very helpful when seeing clients who wish for information about their emotional lives. They are very emotional, so be prepared. Prepared for them to bring up your own repressed feelings. Tears are not unusual when reading with them, but neither is joyous laughter and feelings of happiness and delight. They will demand honesty of you and of those 
you are reading for. It's a little like there is nowhere to run and nowhere to hide when you work with these cards. Oh, I love it. And the mermaids whose energy is channeled through them. When you work with these cards, it can be very helpful to have a seashell or a simple chalice with water you have blessed present. Often we work with candles during readings, but the reflective surface of water forms will pull will put the magic mirror of the mermaids right at the heart of your readings and bring about cleansing quench the emotional thirst of people seeking help and give you a feeling of joy weightlessness and grace so just fyi i did get i have a blue glass little container little like bowl here that i got i put water in more often than with other decks you will find these cards to be empathetic compassionate motive emotive and kind they have been created with and charged by watery moonlit magic of the mermaid realm. They are true oracles. They see to the heart and deliver what must be known to you to understand your own emotions, your relationships, and your journey into true romance. Each of these cards holds a healing energetic pattern within, which will be released to you when you read the message and gaze upon the image. Always make an offering before reading. If reading for another, ask them to make an offering. Read out of doors as much as possible. Okay, so there we go. Just so we're all on the same page here. Um, I'm going to read this last message here that's on the back of, of the book. So I leave you now in the care of the wondrous, caring, and sublimely sensual mermaids. May you have many inspired and blessed readings. Above all, may you be blessed by the emotional healing of the mermaids. May your heart become once again unhurt, whole, and appreciated by others who love you dearly and hold you precious. But most of all, may you love your own sensual, emotional, flowing self. You are blessed by water and born of ocean, and now you are home and can be truly your whole self once again. Blessed be Lucy Cavendish. So there we go. And this makes, I, I'm pretty sure, my fourth Oracle deck of Lucy's. I absolutely love, love her Oracle decks. I don't know if I'm going to get more, but had seen this one a while back when I got the wild wisdom of the fairy oracle and and then it's been now like three for three or four months since I got that oracle and just three days ago all of a sudden out of a, in the middle of a meditation I saw these cards it was like yep you're gonna get those cards now and I order them and here they came on the new moon so magical definitely and I'm just going to shuffle them a little bit more and I don't Oh, <laughs> I think we got our, our card just like kind of popped and landed in my hand. So I'm going to just take this card and maybe we'll get another one. But this is card number 18, Time and Tide, Ocean Spells and Rituals. Oh, wow. Let's get right into it. Yeah, it was really interesting how that popped out and like it popped and then like I caught it and it just like kind of stayed there and I it was like yeah this I'm not moving the deck the deck isn't moving anymore it was really cool <laughs> kind of wish it was on video okay but here we go time card number 18 time and tide so that's also a nine you guys and then and nines are um and it's what it's 234 right now on the 10th so it's one two three four so that's another number here as I'm talking about the nine so nines are very uh when we see numbers with nines especially in messages oracle oracle pages or just you know any any time when a number isn't what we have a number nine or numbers add up to a nine uh because light workers are known as the nines and uh so for more on that you can check out my website and just look into the number nine in uh like angel number nine and and light workers number nine do a search like that and again check out my website because i have a whole page on it okay so without further ado let's get into this card and uh it's really beautiful 
You can Google the image. It's Time and Tide Ocean Spells and Rituals. Uh, and it's just, it's a mermaid on the shore. And she's drawing a heart in the sand. And the ocean is all pretty intense behind her with the sun shining through. It's a very pretty image. Okay, here we go. The mermaids sing in our world and in in yours of old the rituals would be observed and the fe festivals kept because that way the mother would breathe in and out more easily and we would breathe with her in the way of the cycles of the soul planet galaxy we make offerings to the sea mother being sure to clean and care for her liminal zones, the places where you have so often walked. Have you not seen the dolphins moving through the shoreline, appearing to chase the fish? They are hunting, it is true, but they are also moving along the coastline, cleansing to toxic pockets of energy. We often attempt to detangle the creatures from the sea nets and these two are rituals and spells and you humans wonder what sacred acts you can do you can sing and dance beneath the moon on the shore in the forest by the lake but you can also do the most sacred thing of all a magical action at low tide before gathering any magical tools along the along the shore you must be sure you have made an offering to the sea we do not take before we give the sea provides us all with life on this planet just as the green and brown rich loomy earth let us thank her before collecting her driftwood her seashells or casting in our line for fish and if it was reversed, but it wasn't, but I'm going to read it anyway. Feeling disconnected and not interacting with the natural world in a way that reinforces its sanctity. Being very mechanical and real about everything to the point that the mysteries of life and your place in the great wheel get annihilated. Not taking time out to walk the shore and speak with the creatures of the ocean. Feeling that your energy and its expression alone or with others makes no difference difference to the world feeling that ritual spells and other divine actions are dangerous and scary and unnatural and somehow evil leftover religious beliefs superstitious remnants that cause you to disengage or fear fear of doing something wrong when that is the greatest sadness of all feeling it is better to do nothing than to make a mistake and divination it is time for a well thought out act of connection a ritual or spell with the realm of the mer beings with the sea with her creature when done with great formality and mindfulness many acts can become magical and reconnect us to the sacred within us and outside of us you may wish to ritually bathe in a tide pool which could be naturally formed rock pool or sacred bath time you create for yourself as you bathe in the sacred healing pool allow the pool and the water to drain away anything that must be left behind for you to go forward again to go to your own personal high tide at change of tide the salt water crystals will drag through your auric layer clearing and cleansing leaving you feeling light and free yet very present and clear the warm waters of the tide pool make them sorry the warm waters of the tide pool make them mermaidenly goddess pools of healing right on the seashore the amniotic fluid of rebirth for you to be freed from or you may wish to create sand castles and mandalas or sculptures near the tide line we can shape into the sand itself an energy field of tiny sparkling crystals representations of what we wish to see taken away and cleared or what we wish the sea mother to take into her cauldron and help you manifest it may be time to work with uh, Jan, J 
Janeric runes, which have a great history of being drawn into the sand as messages to the great sea beings of all kind. The most important is that you act wow well there we go um an offering connection going into water cleansing in water <laughs> so kind of like what i was just saying before it's just super important to connect with water to be in water to uh make that time you know i talked about how i got really bad energy wells <laughs> Um, and with all this incoming energy and I didn't do my water healing as much as I, as long or as much as I should have at any given time, but especially leading up to, uh, the lunar eclipse. And so it, it talks about how impactful it is to use and be and connect to water to offer yourself also to the, the uh, bodies of water so uh, that's definitely something that you can easily do go to your lake or your creeks or your rivers or your ocean take a bag to collect trash because unfortunately there's always going to be trash to be picked up and it does feel good to pick pick up trash and to leave a place cleaner than where than how you found it and um, but even if you can't do that if you're nowhere near any body of water you can just do that in your in your general area and send the intention that you'll spark somebody else to do it near the water. I am being guided to do another card, to pull another card here. So to go along with time and tide, let's see what we get. Yeah, this is taking a minute to, oh, as I say it, here we go. Sanctuary. Oh, what a, be <laughs> this is hilarious. This is a mermaid in a tub. <laughs> this is what I feel like when I'm in my tub. This is her right here. She's, there's a mermaid in a tub. Privacy, uh, involute personal space respected boundaries and taboo <laughs> and taboos that is really funny card number 28 sanctuary so time and tide and then sanctuary they actually look the colors in these um two cards look pretty similar which is really interesting um but that's just funny a sanctuary she's in the bathtub i'm like how many times do we talk about the bathtub so we're definitely getting a message here you guys um, if you don't use your bathtub and you have one, use it. If you don't have a bathtub, think of an alternative, fill up buckets and put your feet in salty water, dunk, you know, like do the same thing for your hands. That's what I tell my, my clients too. If you don't have a bathtub, you can, you can get a bat, a foot soak and a hand soak for yourself. Set it up, nice hot water and just let your hands and your feet soak and you'll be shocked at how great that feels <clears throat> okay i'm gonna take a little sippy here <clears throat> before we get going okay okay so here we go the mermaids sing the mer world has many beings and one of the most secretive and elusive and are the powerful Melusians. The mother of all Melusians is a twin-tailed mer being, part woman, part dragon, part mer, part fae, and she is here to remind you that all there are time that 
to remind you all that there are times when you need to declare to the world, this is my time and this is my space. For you, much time has been given to others and caring for them, to look over them, to, to watch over them, to loving them, bandaging them, soothing them, satisfying them, feeding them, and now it is your time. In the legend of Melusina or Melusine, it was said this great queen would have each seventh day and night for her own self. And within her sanctuary, in the solitude of a deep and glittering bath, she would turn into her true self, utterly unobserved and utterly free. In the legend, Melusina's husband becomes so curious he violates his promise to her and invades her sanctuary. Not only this, he is horrified at who she is when alone. Melusina's message to you is that you have the right to unviolated time out, time alone, during which you can be free to look, be, sound, dream, and swim as you wish. True freedom within a relationship happens when each person's boundaries are respected, when each person supports times of solitude and recognizes the freedom that comes with trust. It has come time now for your partner to support your space, your privacy, your time alone, and your need for this time to be however you choose it to be. It is time for no one to invade or pry out of fear their exclusive rights to you are being diminished or depraved or betrayed it is time for your relationship to step up a level into greatness where the independence of each the part of you that belongs to you alone is nurtured respected applauded loved and ultimately left to you to determine will you ask for this will you take this when you are given when it is given to you and will you declare these boundaries to be sacred? In many cultures, men and women, individuals and genders have sacred space that is theirs alone. And it is a great taboo for others to enter into that space. This is your time. And may this taboo, the sacred space you set, be held in awe and reverence by all who claim to love you. That by doing so, they will show that they do indeed love the entirety, the multitudes of you, and support and uphold your freedom to be your own self. Wow, that's really, <laughs> that is really, really awesome. Um, wow, okay. Uh, Okay, so it didn't come out reversed. It actually came out kind of sideways. Um, but I am going to read reversed. There is currently no space at all, it seems, for you. Even in the bathroom, you are likely to be called upon, observed, or interrupted. It is time for you and those with whom you share your life to have a discussion about the needs you have at this time for time out and make a decision on when that will be and then set the boundaries. The mermaids feel you are very much in need of this space to grow, to be free, to experiment and feel safe. At the moment, it feels a little like all you do and all the time you have and all you are belongs not to you, but to many others. There must be space and time for you alone. If you ignore this desire for soulful time out your soul's needs will feel disrespected and that could lead to emotional discord you may be attempting to establish this sacred time out with within an environment that is, does not respect those boundaries and sees them as strange or trivial and divination cramped quarters shared bathroom little privacy someone is not respecting you while you're at your most private moments your boundaries must be studied redrawn and then patrolled by you personal space feels either disrespected or as though it is diminishing it is time for some space to be off limits to others and only available to you at certain times this respect will benefit everyone reverence for your personal space will flow th through to res 
respect for their own needs. Therefore, balance and mutual harmony can be achieved and maintained, creating a flourishing, healthy relationship. So if you're a single person, this this goes for you as well. And it's more about your self-care, your self-love, you're taking care of your well-being. I just got done talking about how a few weeks ago I did not take the time that I needed for myself to do what I should have been doing. And instead, I I don't know, I, I was busy and I just didn't do that. And I, I did, I did, but it was, it's all on me ultimately, right? So I'm not blaming anybody, but I'm really just validating this how this works you know whether you're a single person whether you have a a, a, a family uh you're married you have a relationship or it's just you and roommates or you and your animals like for me it's just me and my animals but I have a lot of animals and there's <laughs> there's always one needing me or wanting me and there's times that I'm just like no I need some time to myself and I close up the bathroom and that's exactly where I do it like I talked about is in my bath it's a portal you're alone you're naked you're in the water you can focus it's just you know you and yourself taking care of yourself your time your space your energy your body your emotions your your chakras your skin your hair you know like it's a very important thing and sometimes we just tend to rush through things and just do the minimal of you know just to get by with like the self-care stuff and the self-healing stuff but it's so important to say no I'm taking some time off I'm not I'm not doing what everybody expects me to do or I'm not going to take on more I'm I'm going to or if you already have a full schedule for this foreseeable future Go through it and see and decide where and what needs to be cut out to give yourself some space, to give yourself four hours on a Saturday or, you know, a night where somebody else is taking care of the kids or a day off from work that you don't normally take or, you know, anything like that. Uh, maybe instead of going on a on a walk with your dog, with your roommates or your husband or your girlfriend or whomever, you say, why don't you go alone and I'm going to, I'm going to hang back and I'm going to take a long bath with nobody here in the house or something like that. You just have to change it up for yourself. So this is really important. Um, so time and tide, uh, about connecting with water, connecting Oh, excuse me. With the merfolk, I tend to yawn when I'm connecting to spirit. So it doesn't <laughs> actually mean that I'm tired. Um, although I'm not not tired. I <laughs> I know that I'm yawning because I'm picking up on, on all of these visions that I'm getting. Um, and then sanctuary here. It, 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 it's about really taking the time. Both of these I'm feeling connection. Like connection to... The mer people to water to nature to Mother Gaia and connection to ourselves. Those two, these two things, and like I said, these two cards are very similar in color. The two mermaids look very similar, um, and and I think this is a great message for New Moon because we could really get into this project really look at our, our schedules I love how in this story she talks about like every seventh day it was this this woman would go and lock herself up in the bathroom um, and that's what I try to do I'll set myself up for that either on Saturdays or on Sundays but because I work with people um, um, as a practitioner of health, um, a lot of times that's, you know, those are the time. Well, I try not to schedule anything on Sunday, but Saturday sometimes. So if I, if I'm busy on Saturday with clients, then I definitely try not to schedule anything for myself on Sundays, unless it's absolutely necessary. I really am very, I take that time very seriously <laughs> that I am not committed to anybody else, but myself on Sundays. And I can do that as a single person. You know, it's easier for me than with people who have families and stuff. But even if you have family, families, children, spouse, you know, whomever, uh, you can still decide when, when and 
on your calendar is appropriate for carving out some time on a ritualistic type of basis like every second Wednesday this is what I'm gonna do or every Thursday um, I'm gonna take off work early and come home when nobody's home get home at 1 and be by myself until like 6 or 7 when people start coming home and that'll be my ritual time for for soaking in the bath and meditating and doing whatever stuff I need to do Okay, so those are just, you know, ideas, thoughts, visions that came to me that I was compelled to share. Uh, I hope that you liked these messages from um, the, the mermaid oracle here. It feels to me like these are two very base, fundamental, foundational uh, messages from mermaids so I find it really awesome and interesting that these are the very first cards that I ever pull with this deck here on this new moon it's about um, rituals and offerings and kind of like I'm feeling initiations and you know beginning something new and so that and that's what the new moon is about it's beginning things that are new it's connecting to mother Gaia and yourself the divine feminine and then again sanctuary with taking care of yourself your time your space your boundaries your self-care your love uh what you need um and and to stop giving to giving yourself away all the time and really needing boundaries boundaries are so very important especially if you're a sensitive person an empath a light worker we tend to just over give our time our energy because it does feel good but nobody is going to do it for you. Nobody's going to say like before they, they start in on, you know, with their story, with what they need, with whatever it is and check in with, with you all the time. You need to check in with you. You're your responsibility. Okay. So without further ado here, um, let's see, is there any thing about getting into the meditation I have a feeling we'll probably be working with water and <laughs> some degree given the uh the theme here with the mermaids that is so awesome uh so I'm definitely feeling that but I'm just seeing if there's anything else oh um if you haven't done it already, new moon time is a great time to write down intentions for the upcoming cycle, what you want to release, what you want to work on, what you wish you had energy for or passion for that you're like waiting to like, I really want to like, I'm just, I'm, I need more, more oomph in my in my energy to, to get to tackle that or, you know, I want guidance on stuff like whatever it is writing out writing that out sitting by candlelight writing it out and then burning it uh wherever it's safe outside or inside wherever you're guided and just letting that go letting that energy go let the let the human aspect the individual the personality the ego release the need to control or know how things are going to happen or or the details of things and just, you know, open up to the universe and everything happening as it should in divine right timing. Okay, now with that all said, we're definitely going to get into the meditation. Uh, so set your space, feel free to pause the video or the podcast and uh, just set your space and your body to get be in a comfortable position uh seated and any time of day for this it doesn't have to be at night it can be in the morning any time of day whenever you're guided to do this and you can do this at any time uh whether it is here on this new moon day or i mean it's already three o'clock here in the pacific but this is what <laughs> the way that it goes around here um so whenever you're guided to do this it could be in a, a week from now a month from now if you're guided to this meditation it's always the right time to do it so that is not a problem but um welcome officially to this meditation for 
the new moon here in June, June 10th, 2021. So just give me a moment here to switch gears. want to welcome in our guides and guardians your guardian angels archangels uh galactics gaia um and of course the mermaids the dragons uh any animal spirits your own personal ancestors and spirit guides uh definitely want to welcome everybody in at this time I want to thank you for being here. So just take a moment and think about your entire spirit guide tribe and all the, the different layers of beings and spirits that are connected to you and to everybody. So you have your personal team of ancestors, friends, and family um, that have crossed over um, and not necessarily from this life, from all of your all of your incarnations and and then think about your guardian angels the angel realm in general your miracle and healing angels the archangels the dragons the fae the merfolk the animals galactics and ascended masters and any god goddess deity and en any energy that you are connected to that gives you um that light energy so just think about that let's take a moment here to connect to all of that intense beautiful energy that we're all very much connected to and start taking deep breaths in and out of your nose I want to make sure that you're the way you're sitting whether it's in a chair or or on the floor that you are balanced you're not leaning too far forward or too far back that your pelvis and your hips are uh, in alignment and um, there's no strain there shoulders are down and back hands are easy breezy in your lap each one on your on your leg or each leg are folded in your lap but just easy energy no tension anywhere Uh, neck straight, chin up, and just imagine your spine in alignment. And let's take a few breaths for a count of 10 here just to get regulated and centered in the body. And as you breathe in, once you imagine, I'm seeing little clouds, little clouds of mist hanging in the air and you breathing in these beautiful little misty clouds and feel it going through your sinuses and down your throat and then into your lungs, connecting into your lungs and spreading through your passageways all through your lungs and then uh, your body turning that oxygen and blending that with your blood and sending that through your entire body so each breath in little mists little uh clouds of mists that you're breathing in and so you can really visualize it going all the way down changing transmuting becoming part of you and going through your entire body so do that for a couple more go rounds here of breathing.
And as the air goes down, connecting with each of the chakras through your sinuses and your third eye, your throat, and your esophagus with your throat chakra, down through your chest with your heart chakra and through your lungs, and then processing it down to your solar sacral and root chakras and all of the organs that are associated and connected with those energy centers and then through the body and then open up your channels of energy in your feet chakras and your hand chakras just open up like unzip the bottom of your feet and open up the centers of your hands and starting to feel light energy coming through here. So just as though you're turning on a uh, flashlight that shines directly from the center of your hands. So tap in with that light energy emanating through you, your life force energy going all the way through your arms, down to your hands, opening up your hand chakras and then your feet, same thing, light emanating from your feet. You could feel your feet flat on the floor if they are flat on the floor. Even if you're crisscrossed, you know, just open up your feet chakras and feel that energy permeating the space around you and then connecting with Gaia at ground level. And like taking roots, you want to see these roots start to form under you, under your feet, under your body. Roots of light and love I'm hearing. Going down, 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 getting deeper, stronger, picking up on the energy of Gaia. She's sending pulses of healing and love and connection and clearing and grounding up to you, intermingling with that energy that you have coming down into her body connecting. It's like a, it's like a lightning connecting to lightning, that sort of thing. And just let yourself be grounded into the earth with Gaia and feel that strength, that pull of the earth and the strength of your roots and breathe in. There you go. And then from here, she wants you to just think about, um, taking yourself to a scene on the seashore imagine that where you're sitting on the sand close by the water but it's so the sand is wet enough to where you can um you can you know dig into the sand and get your feet down into the sand and cover your feet in the bottoms of your leg from your knees down so you're kind of like she says you're kind of like trapped there if you've ever done that at the beach you you dig a hole you stick your feet in and you and you put your all the sand back because it's kind of wet it's like really tight but it also feels really good because it's just like you're held onto by the by the sand uh, by, you know, with that energy and like the book said, you know, sand is, uh, is crystalline. They're tiny, tiny little fragments of crystal and rock. That's what sand is. And even though it can feel strange and itchy and be messy, it's got such a magnetic energy, um, of just so much, um, in any little handful so when we dig a hole and we put our legs in and we spread our toes and we feel the, um, the connection, the energetic connection coming from the ocean through the sand and as it holds on to. So she just wants you to, to do that. Put yourself in this space right here. Looking out at the ocean with the ocean waves crashing on the shore. And the mist coming up. She says it's, uh, it's later in the day. It's later in the day. So the sun is starting to go down. We're here for sunset. Sunset. 
and she says it being a new moon we can see the moon but it's dark so all of the stars are lit up so brightly and where we are here at this beach, it's so secluded and special and magical. There isn't a whole lot of light pollution anywhere around. You can just look up from this magical place and see so many stars. You can see galaxies, you can see nebulas, you can see meteors. It's just like almost just so unreal all that you can see and the colors but mostly it's about looking at the light from the sky from the planets from the stars that reflect on the water and as it gets darker and later we start to see light actually moving deeper in the water and it definitely gets our attention. It's a little ways out, kind of past the waves and it's independent from the reflection. And she says, go and investigate. It's perfectly safe and you're being invited into the water, into the light. So you are to dig your feet and your legs out of the sand where they're so warm and comfy, but the water does look good. And no matter what your normal station or how you feel about swimming in the ocean and definitely swimming in the ocean at night, uh, you want to take in this energy of being perfectly safe, having a sense of excitement and adventure, tapping in with your inner child about going into the water, going after the, uh, going after the light that's dancing in the water. So make your way down to where the, the, the waves are and you're going to start start walking in in the water and it feels so good it's so warm as uh nighttime water often is people are always surprised by that but actually swimming in the ocean at night is one of my very favorite things to do because it's been heated up all day by the sun and it's usually at its warmest right after sunset and it's just a magical place to be. So I'm so glad we're being brought here. So make your way into the water. See how warm it feels. And just feel the energy coming from the ocean and the water. And just let yourself um, be taken into and deeper um, past the waves. And she's saying, make yourself go underneath, um, go underneath the water, open up your eyes and see how clearly it is, uh, here, um, way more clear and, and, uh, and detailed than you might imagine it to be. And you can see the lights dancing on the top of the water, but definitely further in and a little further down, there's light coming from the ocean from deeper. So we're being guided to go and follow. And like she said, um, adventure and investigate. So we have this sense of wonder and excitement and um, to explore. So let's go. Let's go forward and down a ways and we find that we can swim very easily and um, and move through the water and that it feels so good and so safe and so energetically, um, I guess you could say supple um, to be there, just so comfortable. And we are getting closer and closer to the lights that are shining. Now we can see that there's several lights um, coming from from like the center area as we go further um, into and deeper away from the shore and a little deeper into the ocean but it feels so good and we're so safe protected and guided we just know we're doing and going exactly where we need to go so keep swimming forward 
getting closer to the lights that are emanating coming up ahead and now we can see it's not just um a few there's more than a few there's um i'm counting six and they're they're different colored lights there's definitely white and yellow and green and blue and orange and pink and violet oh they're so pretty so let's continue going closer and closer to the lights and they're getting bigger as we get closer to them and they start to change their form and before our eyes all of these beautiful lights start to form and shape into mermaids oh wow look at this and they're all swimming and dancing and laughing and playing and they're waving to us oh this is beautiful wow this is really cool um so so it's just um i'm just being told just take note of what you see their faces their colors their um their bodies their fins their hair so beautiful and long and shimmery and um how rainbow and shiny and shimmery their their fins are um and just generally how beautiful they are the love energy coming from these beautiful mermaids and what i'm hearing here they're saying um happy new moon we're so glad that you were brought to us today oh this is sorry this is getting me emotional Whew, so glad that we were brought to them today to share and and rejoice and and play um and have a time together they're calling it a party they say it's the new moon party uh this is a time of celebrations new beginning new birthings um new love starting new soul connections new aha moments a new level of healing for everybody new heart expansion new awareness they're just saying there's so much coming um not to say that it's not always like this with new moons they're saying but this one is special this one is special the very first one after the lunar eclipse full moon um and to bring us to this cycle here that we are truly entering a new place and phase and time for the entire collective for Gaia herself it's like we um, went on the elevator and rode up several floors and came out on a totally new um, dimension I guess you could say they're showing me that the um, that the the material matrix has gone down in power quite a bit that the overall um, uh, fear based energies in the world um, are are less powerful regardless of, of whatever happenings that you may know about of course there's it's not perfect every world but energetically where Gaia is where Gaia has taken us where we are in them they're showing me and we're still moving we're in the middle of our Stargate it is the 10th of June they're saying we have another week of Stargate energies so we're still we're, we're it's like we got off on the new floor but we're um but we're very rapidly still ascending and going up higher and higher creating and connecting to timelines um just so much new is coming in and uh so they're just they're saying this is just a, a very special time um a secret time a time that only uh, the few can tap into use the energies of 
guided to in their own private ways, whether it's, um, you know, by yourself or finding this meditation or any other way that people are doing this. But it is definitely, they're saying, a secret party for those who are um, specifically guided here, for those who are specifically connected and guided to the ocean, to the mer people. Um, so they're saying welcome, congratulations for doing the work that you've already done. And um, hold on one second. I want to see what's going on here. Oh, they're saying an offering. Did you bring an offering? And we did get told about about an offering. So um they're saying it doesn't it can just be your intention if you didn't bring anything with you it can be your intention um whatever that is and to think of of healing of clearing yourself of healing or clearing the environment of offering something to give to charity to um, sponsor those that care for the oceans or the you know the wildlife um, in the oceans um, you can uh, take they're they're showing me taking one of your favorite seashells and actually cleansing it in water and holding it and sending a prayer um uh, of of healing of love of whatever comes to mind to the ocean to Gaia to the mer people to um they, they're saying when you make your offerings we are we can feel your energy and your intent and we can connect with you more from this and we use that energy and those offerings to cycle through the blessed energy of the oceans and bring it back to Gaia and through to everybody else and it eventually of course makes it back to yourself um, you can also take your take a, a crystal and a seashell they're showing me and bury them in the ground in the earth they're showing me for a full new moon for until the new moon so for a whole 29 days if you have a spot in your yard or, or wherever in nature that you can mark and you can dig a little hole and put and put one of your favorite seashells and one of your favorite uh crystals whichever one your ones you're guided to and bury them in the ground um, to connect earth water um, air and fire elements all together through the next 29 day cycle and then on the next new moon you can um, uh, bring them up out of the earth and um, have a whole new um, set of energies attached to the seashell and this crystal so that sounds like a really cool plan something really a real they're saying it's an offering it's a sacrifice because you won't see or be around your shell or your crystal but you'll know they're with Gaia you'll know that the the mer people are connecting to this energy and that is your offering oh my gosh is making me emotional they're saying that is your offering it's like a a, a lifeline directly to them and to her and it's also a sacrifice and a, a ritual and an offering because you you're not going to be around around these these uh, um these objects uh, the crystal and the seashell um so you have to go without you have to separate yourself but at the same time this is showing how you know that you're patient that you're willing to to give time to life and and give that seashell and that um uh that crystal uh that wonderful uh reconnection with mother earth gaia so they're saying so so or if you have anything else that you're thinking of to do whatever you're guided to do for your offering um please um just state your intention now 
So whether it's cleaning up next to a beach or a body of water, donating to a charity, burying a crystal and a seashell together, holding a seashell and um, sending blessings and uh, um, prayers or whatever that it is, whatever you're guided to do, just state your intention now. So they're saying thank you dear one for your offering um, that is greatly appreciated and they are looking forward to um, you going through uh, the motion of your offering. So again, they're saying whenever you do this, it doesn't have to be on the new moon, but it can be whenever you do, do this to the next new moon. So if it's a week after this, recording you can still do it at that time and through you know when we have the new moon or beyond if that's what you feel if it needs another whole cycle but um it don't be like oh i missed out on the new moon day and doing it on that day so forget it or whatever no it's still state your intention for your offering and then do whatever it is that you're intending or you're guided to do okay let's see what else here Okay, so now they're showing me um, taking you like it's swimming to them and around them and them just swimming all around you and sending their lights to you. And their light is just, it emanates from their hands, it emanates from their body, from their hair, from their eyes. They're, they just light up here under the water and you can see that they can like have it get more dim or really, really bright but they're just swirling all around you. They're saying we are with you. We were we will be um connected to you, offering guidance, sending you love, giving you ideas um for yourself to connect with your soul. We're going to um inspire you creatively um, but most of all we're going to get you in touch with yourself your true desires we're going to help you heal and be in love with yourself and in love with love and feel the world your uh, your family your friends your lovers uh, nature and Gaia in a whole new way and so they're just asking for you to open up and accept and receive their gifts and blessings that <laughs> I'm getting emotional their gifts and blessings that they are bestowing upon us now and in the future more is to come they say this is a new beginning a new beginning remember so much yet to transpire and come into the world into your world just be open they say let go of fear and doubt let go of anxiety and stress let go of sadness and anger despair judgment and shame let it all go into the water let it all go as they light you up they want you to connect really deeply connect with your own body they're putting a crown of seashells and crystals on your head they're lighting up your third eye they're putting bracelets on your wrists of seashells and crystals um, they're putting a necklace around your neck of seashells and crystals and they're also putting um, on your ankles both ankles bracelets uh, or anklets of seashells and crystals oh on on your left sorry on your left ankle there are um, crystals and on your right ankle they're little seashells so they're putting they're giving us these beautiful gifts they say these are yours they're to be yours forever and always whenever you go oh i'm sorry this is just making me really emotional uh, whenever you go into the water 
whether it's your bathtub or the ocean or a lake or a um or a hot spring feel the the weight the energy the the reality of having these gifts this beautiful crown of seashells and crystals on your head around your neck and your wrists and your ankles let the energy of the crystals and the seashells uh, cleanse you, guide you, clear you, align you, connect you. <sighs> May they help you to release and let go and to receive divine guidance and just see yourself suspended there under the water with all of the mermaids and now I'm seeing dolphins coming in and whales coming in and all sorts of fish coming in and even sharks coming in lobsters and stingrays oh my gosh everybody is showing up here they're just they're you know it coming in tight around us so the dolphins are really really close with the with the mermaids um swimming around us and then it's just like stacked with beautiful um ocean beings so feel them see them connect with them they say we see you we feel you no matter where you are you're with us and we are with you See yourself going through this next moon cycle from new moon through full moon back to new moon and see yourself beginning um, a whole new cycle and um, really receiving everything that you need in the perfect divine now and right moment to go upon and along your journey and they say remember you can come back here whenever you like we want to see you we want to talk to you we want to play with you we want to love you oh wow so beautiful so they're asking for my silence here for a couple minutes. They want you to just take in the scene, see what you see, connect to whatever animals that you're meant to connect to here. Take note, exchange your words telepathically, um, receive their guidance, um, and so on and so forth. So I'll be back here with you in just a couple of minutes.
Okay, so coming back here, I hope that you had um, a wonderful exchange or exchanges with those animals that that came in closer in for you to see them and exchange energy with them. I mean, told just keep whatever animals came to you um, that you were really conscious of, really saw, really had a good picture of in your mind's eye. Just think about these beautiful animals, all the animals like them, and then whatever the ones were very individually that you saw and have the intent to hold their energy with you and <clears throat> to keep connected with them. <clears throat> and so they're saying um, the mermaids are coming back into focus here. They're saying you can always leave your crown, your necklace, your bracelet, and your anklets on at all times. Or you can decide to take them off energetically and then really put them on and engage with them when you're in water. It's up to you, however that feels like to you. But to really spend some time, um, even after this meditation, just really feeling into what this looks like, what the crown looks like, what the necklace looks like what the bracelets and the anklets look like the most detail that I have for you that they want me to to really bring to you is that they're shells and crystals and just that the the right uh, sorry the left foot is crystals the right foot is seashells that's the only um, specific but to really tap in what do they look like what do they feel like how big are they what are their colors what is it all held together with um, you know, just like really, really see and feel them very, very detailed. They're saying the more you can really um, pick up on the detail of your own, uh, your own shells and crystals that are on in your and on your body in this um, in this energetic way the better you're going to connect with the mermaids with the animals of the sea um, with Gaia herself with the element of water it's just going to really really help you connect the the, sh the crystals really amplify the energy of the seashells and um, the seashells are are well they're like crystals of the sea <laughs> So the two of them together really amplify their energy, really open you up to the other world and especially the the fae and the mer people and the creatures um, and animals of the sea. And then aside from that, they're saying whatever you can remember of us, whatever details will be visiting you in your dream state, will be inviting you to the water, whether it's in your wake state or your astral st state or in a meditation, they're going to be coming in more to you and to us and just to be open to that. And then now they want you to slowly ascend back to the surface of the water. Say your goodbyes to, to the animals. And um, the, the mermaids are coming with you up to the surface. And you breach the surface and take a look up at the sky and just see how beautiful, again, all of the stars look. The outline of the moon is nice and big, but of course it is dark so we can see and feel the energy of the stars see the sparkles on the water and just see the magical water, the magical light shining through the water. And we are asked to just float here, feel the energies, tell your body once again, I release and I receive. And the whole mantra, I release, I receive, I remember, I rise. So tell your body to release stagnant, dense, lower vibrational energies directly into the water. Really feel it kind of like a flush. Just really feel and tell your body just release and release now. Let it go. 
densities, let it go, anger, frustration, sadness, judgment, shame, fear, guilt, any of it, just let it go. It's not doing you or anybody else any good in the collective to hold on to that energy. So as much as you can flush out and release right now or have the intention of releasing in the future in any way, shape and form, you are guided to see yourself doing that now letting go, connecting with the stars above, really feeling their energy, feeling that galactic pull, feeling it in your soul. You're exactly where you need to be. You're beautiful, divine, incarnate in a human life and body. And every day you're evolving, every day you're doing what you're guided to do the best way you can. Be patient with yourself. Nothing and nobody is perfect. Everything in divine right timing. And just let yourself float here. Arms and legs outstretched. Head back. Floating. Just feeling that beautiful energy. Knowing you're so safe here in the ocean. Floating. The mermaids are swimming in a circular pattern around you, about 10 feet out from you, just creating this vortex of energy with their light, really pulling negative energy from you, from your bodies. Just feel that. Feel that. And as the energy is pulling from you, going towards the mermaids and they're pulling and extracting and using the water and using their love energy, pulling from you, light is coming um, down from the, um, from the sky, through the atmosphere, through, from all of the stars above and directly to you to charge you to uh, increase your life force, to bring you light codes and packets of downloads and activations, integrations for you at this time and in the future. And please receive. Just see your body absorbing these little speckles of light, little glitters of light coming down. Just let your body soak it up. Until you're all glowed up, you're lit up, you're sparkly, floating there, taking it all in. And just let yourself stay here, float here for as long as feels good. Feel the mermaids, see their light. They're going to continue. They say they're going to continue to swim around you, pulling energy from you as you're receiving light for as long as you're guided to do so. They want to thank you for being guided here, for your offerings, for accepting theirs, for connecting with them and the animals and the water and Gaia. And I want to personally thank you and everybody here. Of course, um, I want to thank Gaia and the mermaids and the animals and all of you for being here. Please um, stay here as long as you're guided to and just move slowly after this. Drink a lot of water, take a shower, a bath, or go into the water as soon as you can. Don't forget your offerings. And uh, remember, you can revisit this at any time. I want to thank you again. Thank you, everybody, all of our spirit guides, uh, yours, mine, and ours, especially Mother Gaia, the angelics. I love you dearly. It is always my pleasure and great blessing in life to facilitate uh, these channeled, guided, self-healing meditations I thank you for being here until next time. Bye for now.